Good evening, everyone. For those of you I have not had the pleasure to meet or who do not know me, my name is David Dalton, and I am the principal at Newmarket Junior Senior High School. I would like to uh, welcome past and present members of the school board, co-chair Elizabeth McKinney, our superintendent, Dr. Susan Givens, my assistants, Mr. Stefano and Ms. Thorell, our senior class advisors, Ms. Amanda Brower and Ms. Erin Copeland, our distinguished faculty and dedicated support staff, as well as parents, family, and friends. Most importantly, I would like to honor and welcome each of our members of the class of 2021. I cannot adequately express how truly awesome it is to see everyone here this evening and to gather to celebrate this gradua graduation with you all. I cannot believe that this day has finally come. Welcome again to each and every one of you. It's great to see you. Well, it goes without saying that last, the last year and a half has been challenging as if the demands of school and life were not already enough, a pandemic was thrown into the mix. Masking, remote learning, pivots, social distancing were but a few of the new words introduced to our vocabulary during this past year. The use of the term new normal did little to convince any of us that it was normal at all. Right on cue. <laughs> right on cue. Why wouldn't it? This past year was difficult to say the least. So given the uh, challenge of this past year, I thought it might be appropriate to share some thoughts and ideas from others about perseverance, and passion. Some of you may be familiar with the work of Don Dr. Angela Duckworth. Dr. Duckworth published a book in 2016 entitled Grit, The Power of Passion and Perseverance. In her work, she talks about aspects of grit and how it differs from talent. Grit, she says, is a measure of passion and perseverance. People with high levels of grit 
display resiliency and determination. They are hardworking and passionate. They are focused and they have direction. Dr. Duckworth's work also reflects the work of another author, Dr. Carol Dweck. Dr. Dweck's work on mindset, in short, says that the way we view ourselves and our abilities has a big impact on how we flourish. Dr. Duckworth notes that embracing a growth mindset can help us and those around us develop and even increase our abilities, including such attributes as grit. In other words, she tells us that grit can be grown from the inside out and from the outside in. That is, the way we think about ourselves and the messages that we get from others can impact our beliefs about our ability to persevere and overcome obstacles. This year required a level of grit from all of us. Teachers, parents, administrators, and each of you. Perseverance got you here today. You worked, you practiced, you stuck with it. This year was a test of your grit. You also had help. You had the support of your teachers, parents, and friends. Some of you ran to the finish line. Some walked, and some were pushed. Each of us is in our own place regarding our ability to handle adversity and challenge. Each of us is at our own level of grittiness. I'd like to say we staged this whole year as an experiment to test your character and your resilience, but we didn't. It was real. Problems just happen in life. Challenges exist each day. What we do with these challenges reveals who we are. At times, our reactions to challenge provide us with snapshots of our own growth and character. You have experienced it firsthand this year. I hope that each of you is able to have a growth mindset when it comes to your own abilities. In the coming days, weeks, and months, I ask you to reflect, find your passion, pick a direction, and know that with practice and determination, you can accomplish most anything. Be gritty. Be resilient. Be determined. You might even want to pick up a copy of Dweck's Mindset book or Duckworth's book on grit. I promise you, it will make you think. I know that I speak for many of us here when I say to you that we are proud of where you are today. We recognize what it took to get you here, and we are excited for you about what lies ahead. Continue to learn and continue to grow. This year, I have seen firsthand the pride that this community has for New Market students. No matter the path you choose, I and the entire school community, and I am fairly certain the entire town of New Market, wish you the very best as you become the best at whatever you choose to do. Uh, thank you, class of 2021, for making my first year a rewarding one and a learning one. And again, I'd like to welcome everyone here tonight to celebrate with the class of 2021. Thank you.
At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce for the President's Address, Class President Stephen McKenney. Thanks. Good evening, everyone. Um, just testing. Everyone can hear me all right. Yeah? All right. All right. Is that better? Hello? <laughs> all right. Are we good now? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Soaking wet in the rain as I am right now, I'd like to say a few words about the class of 2021 and the impact they've had on me as a person. And honestly, though you may be a little bit sad about this rain, I think it's the perfect end to an imperfect year. So nothing could be more fitting. All right. Despite the fact that I'm standing on the stage right now, it's still a little hard to believe that this is happening. It's been close to 13 years since the class of 2021 entered the public education treadmill. I'm sorry, system. It's been close. Uh, <clears throat> we've experienced a lot in that time. The highs of state championship wins, the lows of an exit school, changes to our building and our administration. We've encountered and overcome countless academic and personal challenges. Some of my fellow graduates enrolled in AP classes to push themselves to their absolute limit. Others took up instruments, paintbrushes, and petri dishes to pursue their artistic and scientific passions. Some of us even learned the primary colors in Spanish four years in a row. <laughs> For those past four years, the members of the class of 2021 have worked, played, and occasionally suffered alongside one another. We formed bonds that will last for years to come. We've aided each other through the best and the worst of times. Our tight-knit community is endlessly supportive, and for that, I cannot thank all of you enough. I remember a time I witnessed one student knock out a second-story window in a botched attempt to save another student from a bee. This level of commitment and dedication to one another is truly inspiring. Graduates, as, uh, as much as now is a time for reminiscing, it is a time for looking to the future. Your years spent at Newmarket Junior Senior High School have all led up to this point, to you taking the next step and striking out on your own. It's a daunting task, but whether you plan to pursue higher education, the workforce, or even an extended and relaxing break, I wish you the best. From all that I've seen of this class, I have no doubt that at least a few of you will go on to do great things. I know that I am one of you, and that I have little more insight into life than a squirrel crossing a busy street. But I implore you to accept this one piece of advice. Whatever you choose to do, wherever you choose to go, whomever you choose to become, make your time count. Act with intention. Dye your hair. Perform a stand-up routine. Join a curling team. Be yourself unashamedly. After all, we only have three more years until the final milestone of our youth. After that, there's little more to look forward to other than getting older and the hamster wheel of a mundane existence. <laughs> In all seriousness, and before I'm dragged off this stage, I'd like to extend a sincere thank you to all of the people that made this occasionally tedious, generally uncomfortable, and constantly stressful year amazing, given the circumstances. First and foremost, our wonderful class advisors, Ms. Brower and Ms. Copeland, who gave their all, all of the time, in order to ensure that our class had the best senior year possible. Secondly, the incredible teachers of Newmarket Junior Senior High School who were able to adapt their classes flawlessly to the erratically changing remote and in-person schedules. I'd like to extend a big thank you as well to the underappreciated high school maintenance staff who worked tirelessly throughout the year to make sure that our learning environment was safe and sanitized always. And finally, thank you to the members of the class of 2021 for being there, for being supportive, for being positive most of the time, for working hard and for making the best out of a bad situation.
Thank you again to the class of 2021 for taking this journey alongside me. I wouldn't have had it any other way. All the best. At this time, uh, it is my honor to bring to the podium for the salutatory and address, Taylor Kennison. Yeah. Fellow classmates, faculty, administration, family, and friends, welcome. Before I begin, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all who have helped us get to this point. For their constant commitment to the New Market Schools and the students, especially over the last year. If the audience could hold their applause to the end of my thank yous, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you to the teachers and paraprofessionals for adjusting the ways they taught this year, but still showing up every day, eager to make a connection with their students. On top of their teaching responsibilities, they were navigating through the challenges on the home front as well. To the administration, no one handed you a playbook for a pandemic and direction from above was not always clear. Thank you for being strong leaders that made tough decisions for our school, always with the safety of students and staff out front. To the school board and many other volunteers who gave up their weekends and nights to help improve the school system and dropped everything to figure out a way to get kids back into the classroom. Thanks to the custodial staff, we showed up to clean and safe buildings every day because of their hard work and extra commitment over the last year. Without them, a return to school last fall would not have been possible. To the school nurses for all they do to keep our students safe and healthy. Thank you to the food service professionals for continuing to provide students with meals every day during these unprecedented times, figuring out how to bring food to classrooms. Thank you to the bus drivers for getting us to and fro. To the sports coaches for working extremely hard and creatively this year to ensure student athletes could play and stay safe. A special thank you to my high school swim coaches, Nicole Benson and Mickey Burns for giving us a swim season this year. Last but not least, to the parents and caretakers for their constant support. Even with the extra burdens the pandemic placed on you, you were always there. Thank you, everyone. Can we all rise and give a round of applause? As I sat down to ponder what I might say to the class of 2021 and their guests, I was really humbled and at a loss. I didn't know what to say. After several days of being stumped, I asked my dad if he had any ideas. He told me two things. First, in his gentle rhetorical way, he said, Taylor, you hold great promise, but should a 17-year-old really offer advice? Secondly, he told me, be brief, especially if the Bruins are still in the playoffs. <laughs> Got it. I ultimately agreed on both points. So what I came up with is a poem entitled I Hope, which briefly expresses my well wishes and remembrances for this great class with a nod to Dr. Seuss. I hope. I hope that we all find our passions, that we stay true to ourselves, not what's in fashion, that we find a great friendship or a great career or a great love or better yet, all of the above. I hope fear never becomes our anchor but that wonder fills our sails, that we never get lost in life's details. May our heart guide us, not but our eyes. Let us post more Snapchats of the glorious sunrise. I hope our bright lights never dim from life's passing storms, that we not miss a class by oversleeping in our dorms. <laughs> I hope we overcome our addiction to Aroma Joe's rushes, but if we don't, that's okay, we have bigger fusses. That we never again feel the type of stress as preparing for lip syncs. That's an awful thought, don't you think? <laughs> when we have a driveway moment, I hope we await the song. Be it Swift, Sinatra, or Drake, you can never go wrong. I hope we find our highest joy in the joy of others. And while off on our next adventure, we remember to call our mothers. If by chance you are still listening to this poem, I hope you can relate to a line or two. 
Anyway, I must say, it was my great good joy to take this journey with you. So congrats, class of 2021. High school is done. May we look back fondly and with hope for what's to come. Thank you. Next, it is my privilege to bring to the podium for our valedictorian address, Sierra Yim. Fellow classmates, faculty, administration, family, and friends. Well, wait a second. This is not my speech. <laughs> I thought the opening was a little bit weird. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good evening, parents, families, teachers, and educators. We're in the middle of a story. Come on. <laughs> Thank you for being here to support and celebrate with us tonight. And to my peers in the New Market class of 2021, happy graduation. We did it. Just yesterday, we received the letters we wrote at the end of eighth grade to our future selves. When you reread them, maybe you just chuckled at your burgeoning eighth grade diction and your grammar, but likely, as I did, you also let out a few incredulous and slightly embarrassed laughs about what you, your notions of high school would be like. For instance, I'm sure none of us predicted that several months of it would be held online. Now, as we are graduating, we are able to reflect on these letters and how far we've come as, indi as individuals four years older. Around the time we were writing these letters, I remember Mrs. Leonza, our eighth grade English teacher, telling us how excited she was our middle school about our middle school graduation and future in high school. She explained that her excitement for watching us enter this next chapter in our young lives was one of the reasons she wanted to teach teenagers. Teaching teenagers to follow their personal legends or their life's goals and passions in high school doesn't sound like an easy task. Yet teachers make it their personal legend to do just that, inspiring and supporting the next generation to follow their personal legends and improve for future generations. Because we have been so fortunate to have such great teachers through our 12 years of school in this small town, I would like to share my appreciation for all of the teachers in Newmarket. Thank you for your guidance. But it's not only the teachers who help support us. It's also the paraprofessionals, administration, coaches, and staff like custodians, food service workers, bus drivers, parent volunteers, and also our school board members. So let's take a moment to thank them for their work as well. Now, you might be wondering why a moment ago, I used such a grandiose term as personal legend to describe someone's life purpose or their goal in life. The term comes from the book, The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. In this book, a boy from southern Spain has a dream telling him if treasure awaits him at the base of the pyramids of Giza in Egypt, and that to unearth this treasure is his personal legend, or his life's purpose. And although he is at first reluctant to leave the life he is familiar with behind, he eventually agrees to go on this journey. Along the way, he encounters several interesting figures. First a mysterious king, then the merchants of Tangier, next an Englishman, and finally an alchemist. Each one teaches him lessons that help him achieve his personal legend. And in the way that high school represents a step toward our own personal legends, we can also draw parallels between the progressions of the lessons that this boy learns and those we gained in our four years of high school. When we started out in high school, we were a lot like the boy at the beginning of the journey. Although for us, the transition from middle school into high school didn't mean moving from another building, it was marked by newfound independence. Drawing on our interests and early notions of what our personal legend, of what personal legend we wanted to achieve, we began deciding the classes we wanted, what activities we wanted to dedicate ourselves to in our free time, 
and how to balance extracurriculars and act our act academics. Excuse me. The process wasn't always straightforward or simple. Whether it was taking a difficult honors class, studying for your first AP test, of trying out for a sports team, or getting your first after-school job, we were exposed to situations that put us outside of our comfort zone. In these cases, we learned the importance of perseverance and grit in achieving our goals, a lesson that is pervasive in life. Perseverance also showed itself in another way during high school, having an open mindset toward learning. Sometimes we question the real world application of our lessons. A decade from now, will we really have jobs that require being able to recite trigonometric identities, recall the reasoning behind Shakespeare's rhetoric, or remember the date the Civil War started? However, even if it is not apparent, learning these things in high school was not pointless. To quote the philosopher Didu Krishnamurti, there's no need to end, there's no end to an education. It is not that you read a book, pass an examination, and you finish with an education. The whole of life, from the moment you are born to the moment you die, is a process of learning. So even if the individual facts and the details of some of these high school classes become trivia in your future, there's, high school teaches us an even greater lesson. It is important to stay curious and be the type of continuous learner Krishnamurti mentions. In the words of biologist Thomas H. Huxley, try to learn something about everything and everything about something. Learning and experiencing the world enriches you. So soaking up everything you can will only make you more prepared to advance on to your personal legend. Aside from the importance of perseverance and learning, high school also prompts us to reflect on what we are passionate about, what we see ourselves pursuing in our personal legend. Like every object resonates when excited at its natural frequency, individual people resonate with certain subjects, topics, and causes. When we find and pursue those genuine passions, not to impress anyone or to prove a point, but for our own enjoyment, we begin to uncover our personal legends. And so maybe our journey through high school did not involve riding camels across the Sahara Desert and learning from mysterious kings and the alchemists, like the boy and the alchemist did. But these lessons and skills that we can now take out into the world and expound upon as we pursue our personal legends were taught by figures that are just as awesome and important. Not only our teachers, but also in our personal lives with our parents, family, mentors, and friends. So on a personal note, I want to now thank my family and friends for their support throughout my life. Thank you, mom and dad. For supporting me and teaching the importance of perseverance, hard work, and a positive outlook. Thank you, Grams and Gramps, and Yay and Da, for encouraging me in my academic career. Thank you to my sisters for making me laugh. Thank you to my aunts and uncles and my friends. And thank you for the shout out, April. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to extend this thank you to everyone in the audience and watching at home tonight. Thank you to the parents, grandparents, aunt, uncles, siblings, family members, family friends, and mentors that have supported the members of this class in life and our endeavors for almost two decades. So recently, we the class of 2021 wrote another set of letters to the people we'll be, we will be in another four years. When we open those, we will probably have another good laugh about how our seemingly straightforward ideas and goals will fade in favor of having unexpected experiences and new interests. As we've seen with our eighth grade, eighth grade letters, it's normal for our personal legends to evolve. So whatever you may do, whatever your personal legend may be, however many failures and successes you have along the way, whoever you meet in the future, and whatever you decide to do in life, just remember to enjoy the journey. And I'd like to conclude the speech with a short tale about enjoying the journey Coelho put into his book, The Secret to Finding Happiness. He tells a story of a shopkeeper who sent his son on a journey to learn the secret of happiness from the wisest man in the world. When he arrived at the wise man's palace, the man simply gave the son a 
uh, simply gave the son a spoonful of oil and asked him to walk around the palace without spilling a drop and then report back to him. So the shopkeeper's son walks around the palace without spilling the oil and returns to the man in triumph. I didn't spill it, he says. But then the man asks him a question. He asks, did you see the beautiful Persian tapestries I have in my dining hall? Did you see the garden that took 10 years to create? And did you see the beautiful library I have with the beautiful scrolls? And the son answers, no, I didn't. So the man tells him that the secret to happiness is to keep the spoon full and yet see all these beautiful new things in life. So class of 2021, I hope you can always remember to keep your own spoon full, but never forget to marvel at the wonders of the world. And with that, I request all of you to stay gold and thank you class of 2021. Thank you, Sierra. At this time, we are going to prepare for our presentation of diplomas. So I would ask um, those past and former and current board members to please come to the front stage. Honoring our past tradition, we will have uh, five former and current board members present their own children with their diplomas. They will be joining us up front here on the stage and they will come up to onto the stage to present a diploma when their graduate is called. Okay, we begin our presentation of diplomas with Sierra Sky Yim. Congratulations. Taylor Mary Kennison. Congratulations, Sam. Stephen Russell McKenney. Graduates. Julia Evelyn Perry. Congratulations, Julia. Morgan Virginia Hawk. Michaela Desi Hartman. Michaela, congratulations. Zoe Sky McGurk. Congratulations, Zoe. Emma Rose Ambrosio. Congratulations. Liliana Ruth Barrett. Lauren Elizabeth Bowie. Congratulations. 
Caden William Corbin. Abigail Amarentine Henry. Grace Smith Wunny. Congratulations, Grace. Thank you. Congratulations, Grace. <laughs> Hayden James Russell. Colby Paul Kumpf. Zachary Brent Mosher. Colin Sinclair Blake. Alexis Catherine Andre. Arachelle Satine Bolivar. Congratulations. Jared Andrew Clough. Morgan Taylor Critchett. <laughs> Ashlyn Marie D'Agostino. Benjamin Stanley Ernest. Madison Catherine Barbara Estelle. Congratulations, Daddy. Maria Gabrielle Fillion. Congratulations. Isabel Chichek Fortier. Got it. Haley Elizabeth Fralish. Congratulations, Haley. Brooke Sylvia Goodspeed. Congratulations, Brooke. Nicholas Alden Harder. Emily Marie Hoover. Congratulations, Emily. Good job, Emily. Stephen James Coffey. Congratulations. Lance Wilson Cody. Yeah! Go, Lance. Audrey Ann Davis. Congratulations, Audrey. Congratulations. Joseph Peter Doyle. Phineas Alexander William Furman. Congratulations, Ben. Brianna Renee Fillion. Congratulations. Kaylin Elizabeth Fowler. Congratulations. Nicholas Carol Goodman. Congratulations.
Hayden Michael Goodrow. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. Andrew William Gray. Jeremy Patrick Kennedy. Samuel Eric Labonte. Michael W. Leung. Michael, congratulations. April Rowan Magbanwa. Got it. Riley Gail Marshall. Stop right. Catherine Grace Morgan. Congratulations. Cullen Keith O'Neill. Let's go. Riley Lynn Polishano. Congratulations. Dominic Joseph Scarponi. Mia Kate Smith. Congratulations, Mia. Owen Jamison Hayes. Stop it. Dylan Michael Jordan. Joseph Daniel Lavalley. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thomas Parker Leahy. Yeah. Thomas, congratulations. Congratulations. Caroline Smith Lunny. Yeah. Chloe Elizabeth McKinney. Bridget Elizabeth Moore. Congratulations, Bridget. You're welcome. She's coming up. Jack William Noon. Yeah! Congratulations. Amarbury Pubicom. Congratulations. I love you, Amar. Brandon Corey Schleter. Congratulations. Connor Stephen Sullivan. Congratulations, Connor. Doug Ray Pascal Thorin. Congratulations. Owen Knight Tower. Nice job. Chloe Lou Tobin.
Jessica Renee Wickens. Congratulations. Stephen Tyler Wood. Stephen, congratulations, buddy. Evelyn Tally Zungi. Alex Vincent Sensenbath. Vivica Kaylin Tavisuk. Mitchell Peter Tilton. Congratulations. Jenna Rose Titus. Congratulations, Jenna. Jake Angelo Tobin. Congratulations, Jake. Natalie Rose Wiswer. Tyler Owen Wood. Congratulations, Tyler. And Ethan Michael Zundel. Congratulations. Okay, seniors, we're going to ask that you begin with presentation of the sunflowers at this time. So make the best of this as the known as why. It's not a question, but a lesson learned in time. It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right. I hope you had the time of your life.
louder without the mic. All graduates, please return to your seats at this time. All graduates, please return to your seats. Okay, at this time I'd like to ask our marshals please to uh, take their positions in front of the classes and please help our graduates move their tassels. It is my privilege and honor to introduce to you the graduates of the class of 2021. Thank you all so much. That concludes our ceremony this evening. Thank you.